was the beloved. He was born and raised in love. Yes. He abused it and strayed from it. Mm -hmm. He squandered and returned, broken and sorrowful, begging at best for some miserable scrap of mercy. But that's not what he found. He walked right back into an unbounded love, didn't he? Yes, he did. Not a grudging acceptance or a plea bargain. Not even tough love with lots of strings attached. He, his father rather, ran wildly to meet him, to embrace him, and to rejoice in him, to love him, and to forgive him. And these few familiar lines that we hear this morning in Luke, Jesus explains the nature of God and our relationship with him. God is the wellspring of love. Yes. And we are His beloved. Yes. He loves each one of us. Yes. And our falls and our resurrections. Yes. He loves us in the brothel and the pigsty. <laughs> he rejoices when we turn to Him, whether in exaltation or in desperation. Amen. How many times have we acted out this story in our own lives? Maybe not on this dramatic of a scale as we've heard in Luke. But how many times in so many petty ways have we turned from God only to come slinging back to God, broken and discouraged? In the tale of the prodigal, Jesus guarantees us that we can ex what we can expect from the Father. Unconditional love, boundless joy, divine mercy. And the frequent telling of the story, emphasis has rightly concentrated on the repentance of the prodigal and the forgiveness of the father. More contemporary reflections also explore Christ's intimate understanding of human nature mm -hmm. and what he tells us about the firstborn faithful son. To all appearances, the prodigal son and the firstborn are two distinct individuals. Amen. But real life is often more complicated yes, than that. Yes, At different times in our lives, we can find ourselves cast in either role, can't we? Yes. And how seamlessly we can flip from asking forgiveness for ourselves to denying forgiveness for others. Yes. So there is a double lesson, I think, here that we can find in the parable this morning. We are not only loved, but we are meant to love. We are not only forgiven, but we are meant and called to forgive. Yes, we are. Obviously, there are no conditions to unconditional love, is there? But that does not mean that God's love is one-dimensional. Neither is it one directional. It is always there for the asking. But when we fully embrace it, we get a special grace that tells us we must share it. We must pass it along. We must return it with praise and honor to the author of love, to whom much is given. Much is expected. That is what it means to be the beloved, right? As we continue to journey through this season of Lent, Lent is a season of reflection, contemplation, particularly on our human brokenness and our need for God's redemption. You know, I think that Lent helps us to see the lostness of all of the characters in this story this yes, morning. Yes. Lent helps us to see the reasons, the instances which lead to Broken relationships, suspicion, yes. and an unwillingness to admit our own Hallelujah. faults. Lent helps us to see our desire for extreme autonomy when it could be very well cut off, off us yes, off yes, from yes. community. Lent helps us to see our deep longing for love. And yet, the only way out seems is for ourselves, 
from those in whom we love when we don't show the love that Christ has for us. Each and every one of these Lenten perspectives on this story, you know, is worth a sermon in its own. In the end, the story of the prodigal son might very well point to our own lostness. To be lost is to reject a relationship. To be absent yes. of relationship or to be in a relationship where all you feel is lostness. Mm -hmm. And the answer to our lostness may very well be the restoration of relationships which we initially reject, deem unimportant or not worth our time. Amen. So if God is welcoming us back, then how should we respond mm -hmm. to others? It is good to hear that God is always there, ready to welcome us home. It is good to know that God will celebrate our return. Mm -hmm. But what about those who have felt left out mm -hmm. and down in the ditches? Yes. Yes. How do we respond to those to tell them that God loves them and God will welcome them yes, back to Him as well? Yes. Yes. What if God instead is the prodigal who seems so irresponsible? What if God is the God who comes to us in the disguise of those we despise? Those who have hated and killed us? Those who have rejected us, abandoned us? Those who annoy and frustrate us? And those who we exclude? What if God came to us through those folks? Yes, yes, yes. In the disguise of a sinner? Yes. The prostitute, the unclean enemy. God comes to us and challenges us to participate in a radical, irresponsible hospitality that turns the rules of polite society upside down. Yes, yes, yes. And if God comes to us as this, how do we respond? As the Father does? Burning to the social norms and opening his life yes. to the chaos yes. the prodigal brings, or as the brother does, maintaining society's values but closing off his life yes. to loving the other. To go into the banquet is to open myself mm -hmm. to chaos. It tips all the rules I have learned to live by yes. upside down. How much easier to keep my bearings by nominating a few sinners yes. than I can remain unchallenged. I'm not part of the problem. In this parable, Jesus is asking us whether we will entertain angels, even if the angels look like demons. Yes, come on. Like exactly what we fear and loathe. He is asking us whether we can overcome our prejudice and the oppression of religiosity to open our arms enough to embrace the other. The other who is actually our closest kin. Jesus once said that if we have seen the thirsty, mm -hmm. the oppressed, yes. the imprisoned, the yes. lame, the blind, the crippled, the abused, the neglected, then we have truly seen him. Yes. Not some carbon copy seen him, Jesus our Lord, but the real true Jesus our Lord. The story of the prodigal son is about God's ever expanding grace. A grace, brothers and sisters, that will offend our sensibilities and our collective sense of fairness. God's grace cares little for our reputation in this world. God's grace ought to change us if we are true recipients yes, yes. of it. I had a friend, and I still have this friend, who said that he was in the grocery store one morning and he heard a loud crash in the grocery store and something went shattering. Being nosy, of course, he said he went over to look and try to go to where that sound was coming from. And he saw some people whispering and looking back to the end 
end of the next aisle. When he called down that aisle, he saw an older lady. An older lady had hit a shelf containing many dishes that were quite expensive. And they had fallen to the ground and they broke. She was kneeling there on the floor, embarrassed as she picked up the pieces of all the broken glass. And her husband was knelt there beside her as well, embarrassed. She thought to herself, how am I going to pay for all of this broken merchandise that I've broken? So my friend went over and knelt down beside her and was standing there with her and told her not to worry that he would help her pick up the broken glass. And about a minute or two later he said that the store manager came over and asked you know, what was going on and the lady explained that she accidentally you know, hit the shelf and the plates fell down when she hit it with her cart and she was so sorry and she was so embarrassed and just didn't know what to do. And the manager replied, don't worry, it's okay. Don't worry about it. She said, I don't have a clue what I'm going to pay for this. And the manager said, don't you worry. Don't worry at all. We're going to take care of this. Our insurance will pay for this. So the manager said, I need to get you to the hospital so we can you know, get you checked out. Oh, no, I'm fine. I insist that you go to the hospital and get it checked out. The lady you know, went on to the hospital and my friend prayed with her. And you know, for a moment, when my friend was telling me this story, I thought, wow, you know, that reminds me of God. We have so many broken pieces of things in our lives. So many things how we don't know how we're going to figure them out. But my God comes along and picks them up. Picks up all of our brokenness. Picks up all the things in our lives. And puts them back together for a minute. And calls us home. And calls us into a relationship with Him. I serve a God who is mine. Who is faithful. Who is loving. Unconditional. And my God. Will pick all those broken pieces up. And mend and put them back together. If I just allow him to do that. Perhaps. These stories. Will inspire us. To see the world as God sees the world. God looks for the one who is lost. Not the 99 who have life seemingly all figured out. But he looks for the ones who are lost. I know I'm lost. <laughs> you know, I have a lot of figuring out to do in my life. And that's okay. I'm not perfect people. But I believe and I know that I serve a risen Savior who is in this world today. And it's helping me to mold and put those broken pieces of my life back together. Amen. And it's always going to call me back home. Always going to call me back home. The place where I need to be, where I know that I am loved, and where I can be who I want to be. In the house of the Lord, who is welcome. Everywhere, everywhere. Everybody should be welcome, right? Where everybody should be loved. I know I preach this a lot, but I hope and I pray that we can be a place where all feel welcome. And embrace. As we move forward. I'm not forcing you. At all, I'm not. It's my prayer to God that we.
we at St. Luke can be that place where all will know that we are we're dirty. Yes, we are. You know, we are. Yes, we are. And I heard it said before that the church is like a hospital. Amen. We all are hurting. Sick from something. Mm -hmm. But this is a place, mm -hmm. I hope that it can be a place where we can find refuge. Yes. Yes. Where we can come and be healed yes. by the great physician. Yes. Yes. That's better than any of those doctors. <laughs> They're great too. Yes. yes. But God our Father is the greatest physician of them all. Yes. Will heal our wounds and our brokenness, yeah. and our sickness, yeah. and make us more and more like Him, yeah. if we are willing and obedient and faithful to Him. Yeah. For He will do that. Every time. Calling all sinners, come home, come home. Ye who are weary, are you weary today? Yeah. 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 Yeah.